to all of you. My name is Kokun, and you can call me by my initial KK. Yeah. I go with uh, he, him, his as a pronoun. Um, I'm actually a developer. I call myself a technologist. I like to learn, to build, and to share. That's why I'm here today, uh, to share something that I've done and I have uh, deployed in the past uh, project before. <coughs> so if you'd like to connect uh, with me, um, my email address, kkgun at live.com, my personal one, and my uh, work email, and my LinkedIn ID, kkgan, my Twitter, kk underscore uh, digit 9, an. So feel free to connect with me. I'm currently with Twilio, actually. Yeah. So for the sharing today, I would like to uh, bring us all through the building of a food ordering chatbot uh, using the AWS Lex, Damda, and the Twilio SMS. So as we know, uh, for the cloud technology, there are different technologies out there, like Google, uh, Azure, and etc. So today, uh, I'm sharing how to build the chatbot using uh, AW, uh, AWS Dex. So for the agenda, uh, this is how I plan to do it. I will bring you through the scenario first. And with the scenario, we are the key components I use in building the chatbot. And then I'll do a quick dive demo. Right? So after the demo, I will bring you through the steps to build the chatbot using the DAX. Right? So I hope the time is uh, enough. I actually plan for only 20 minutes. Uh, but bear with me if I run a bit too fast. Uh, uh, at the end of the session, uh, I believe uh, if any one of you interested uh, to do something, to try it out, I will share some of the resources that can help you uh, to go through building the chatbot yourself. Right? And of course, uh, because of a time constraint, I prefer to keep all the Q&A at the end of the session. Right? Thanks. So without further ado, uh, let's take a look at the scenario that we are going to demo here. So I'm going to use the mobile phone, SMS to dial to chat with the AWX uh, DAX chatbot. So the chatbot is the intelligent way it processes the human natural language. Uh, but because after we take the response or answers from the users, we want to process this. By, for, for example, for this example, I'm actually taking the answer and then put it to the order queue, which is using the AWS SQS message queue. And then the another Lambda function, will, which is listening to the, to the message queue, will pick up the order and then pass it to the chef. So the chef will prepare the order. And once the order is done, mark is completed, and the Lambda function is going to send an SMS to inform the customer, to inform the user that the order is done and ready for pickup. Right? So that is the demo we're going to see. <coughs> so, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to share my screen, my uh, mobile phone screen. <coughs> Hope you can see my screen, right? OK. So this is my mobile phone. So uh, what I have here is I can actually uh, SMS with the chatbot. So I can say, uh, hi, I would like to order some food, for example. Yeah? And I send. So this message is actually sent to the uh, DAX bot. So the bot will respond to me, saying that, OK, we have options of burger, pizza, or pasta. Which one would you like? So I can say, uh, maybe, OK, I actually pre-program not for all the foods. I only pre-program for the burger. So I just type, I would like to order burger. I will just make it short, so I'll just say burger. And later, we were going to take a look at how I actually build this step by step. Okay? So when I say burger, it actually handled by a second intent. So there are multiple intent here. So the first intent is more like a greeting that understand. Oh, sorry. Screen. Yeah. Try to share it again. 
right? So, okay, I'll say I want to order a burger. Okay, so it asks me which type of burger. So maybe I say I want to order a beef burger, right? So again, this is the same intent. So when you take a look at the next data, you create multiple intent. So when you try to ask something, the bot will understand and it will learn at the same time as well. So the next time the accuracy will become better, right? So, okay, ask whether you want to go with a meal or a la carte. So I'll say, okay, maybe a meal. <coughs> so what we answer, it actually takes it as a variable. It's saved in a variable called a slot. Later, we're going to take a look at a slot. So do you want to confirm? I say yes. So as, a, as you can see, this is the end of the conversation. I said, okay, confirm. I want to make a order for the, a set of um, meal for, of a beef burger. Then once confirmed, it says my order is fulfilled, right? And at the same time, you see, I should have received a notification. So for the demo purpose, I make it uh, affect it like immediately the burger is ready for me to pick up and the message will be sent to, to me. So I think I should have received something like uh, order is ready to pick up, right? So this is the demo we're going to take a look. <laughs> so now I'm going to Still showing my phone, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah I know. Let me stop the mirroring. No, okay. Alright. So, how to build the bot? I don't think I'll go into every single detail, but at a very high level. Uh, can we zoom in? Yep, sure. Uh, uh, pass, huh? Okay, thanks. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, don't worry about the wording. If you cannot read, I will read it out for you. Uh, so basically, how I build it, you go to the AWS console, you search for Lex, and then you will find the AWS, uh, the Amazon Lex, and you click on uh, the AWS Amazon Lex. It will bring you to the Lex dashboard. So this is my dashboard. The dashboard, uh, as you can see, currently I have three bots built. So what we're going to do is I'm going to quickly build one new board for you to uh, understand and also get an experience like the steps by step how I build it. <coughs> All right, so to do that, I'll just simply click on create board. So for the demo purpose, I'm just going to create a bank board. You can also use some of the blueprint, which is some of the predefined uh, intents or slots that is uh, programmed for us to have a quick start. So to do this, I will just maybe call this a KK uh, food ordering bot. But I'm going to leave the description as empty. Opener. And then, uh, I'm, since I already have existing bot, I already have some of the role that I can use. So I'm not going to create a new one. I'll just pick one of them. And uh, for the copper, uh, this is good for anyone. So no restriction. I'll leave the other options as it is and click on next. Add the port. So the moment you will need to pick like what is the uh, voice interaction uh, options you want to select. So for me, maybe I like the voice of a Sally. Hello, my name is Sally. Let me know how I can assist you. So once you selected the voice options, you can click next. And the next thing you need to do is the intent. So by default, it will create a new intent for us. I'll just rename this as the greeting intent. So what does this mean is, uh, basically, you want to listen to what, the peop what people ask. For example, maybe I want to ask something like hi or hello. Or is anyone there? I mean, just simply add a few of them first. All right. So for this intent, I'm going to make it very simple. So once I uh, listen or I capture some of the uh, requests, I will immediately, immediately uh, fulfill this intent. So I'll say, okay, uh, hi, thanks for contacting KK Cafe, maybe. Uh, how can I help you? And then I'll save this intent. As simple as that. After you have uh, defined the intent, uh, you can start to build and test it. So I have just built one intent to start first. 
So we get the idea like how we answer, we question the board and how the board uh, will answer us. So after you define this, it's built, and then you, what you need to do is to test it out. So for the testing, I prefer to turn the inspect on. So this will help us to identify like the question is mapping to which intent. Since we only have one intent, the moment you test it, you will see it actually map to the greeting intent. So the moment I ask hi, and then you will say, okay, that is the, the fulfillment prompt or response that I'm getting, right? So if you type something else, like I would like to order food, then it will consider as fulfilled or, right? Because it wouldn't un understand. So the next thing is I'm going to create another intent to handle uh, the other questions. So to do that, uh, back to the intent list, I will add another intent, empty intent. I'll, I'll call this maybe take order. I quickly add one. And then for this intent, I'm going to define to, uh, to listen to some of these questions like this, the, stats, uh, the, the, the statement like, for example, I would like to order some food. I want food. I want to order food, for example, yeah? So you will realize when we do the testing, you might have, or someone else might have a different way of asking questions. In case that the bot does not understand, then you can enter other intent in a different way of asking. So to do that, uh, I have just defined a few first for the demo purpose. So I'm going to add a slot which is available to capture the answer or the response from the user. So I'll define this as food, and I'll use the default uh, slot type. So I use the alphanumeric, and the way I put it is, sure, uh, what food would you like to order? <laughs> All right. So if we if we uh, capture or the user answer, and uh, we will fulfill this. So we make it very simple. So once fulfilled, we said uh, your order of. So this is how we use the slot. The variable that we use to capture the, the answer uh, is on this way, for example, yeah? And then I'm going to save this intent. And then we are good to build and test this round. So we can, we can use voice or we can use the same way I, how I tested just now. So once this is done, uh, we can go to another round thing. So this is how I built the bot by adding all the potential, all the possible intents uh, for the bot. So as you can see on the left panel here, there's a list of intents that we have already created. Now I'm going to turn on the inspects again. I say hi, and the bot will answer me. Hi, thank you for contacting. How can I help you? Then you can say, okay, you can, okay, I tap something different what I created in the intent. I say I want to order food. See the bot will understand and will pick up the right intent for me. So as you can see, it actually pick up the right intent, which is take order intent. And it says, sure, what food would you like to order? So I will say pizza. So remember, I, this is a prompt asking for a response from the user. So if I type pizza, it says, okay, pizza is on its way, meaning a fulfillment is done, right? So we can do some testing as well like this. For example, I want to say, hi, Thanks for contacting KK Cafe. How can I help you? I would like to order some food. Sure. What food would you like to order? Burger. Sure. Right. What so this is the channel and how we interact with the, with, the, with the bot. The next thing I would like to show you is, remember in the demo I have, I'm actually using a text SMS. So if you go to the bot that we have just built, under the aliases, this is the language that we have defined, an English language earlier. And then in the alias, uh, what we want to do right before I do a channel integration, maybe I want to show you how to use the Damla function to handle uh, or to interact with, to take some of the advanced uh, logic to process 
for the bot. So to do that, uh, what I'll need to do is I'll go to the areas under the language, and then there is an option called which Dhamna function you want to use. I have one Dhamna that, uh, function that I've created earlier. I'll just save this one. So this is not uh, everything. Once you have defined the Lambda function, what you can do next is you go to the intent, for example, and the take order intent. You will realize that uh, we have options to say we want to use the code hook to handle all the questions and answers. So for my case now, I'll just make it simple. I'll just uh, say I want to use the fulfillment to, hand, to, to be handled by the Lambda. So once that is done, uh, if I do the testing again this time, uh, I think I need to build. Okay, while well, it's building, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the Lambda code. So you have options of uh, different programming language to write your Lambda uh, function. So the one I have here, I'm actually using uh, Node.js. So what I need to do is I'll create a handle to listen to the event. So this event will from the event, you will be able to identify whether it's a fulfillment or it's a conversation or it's a transition between events and so on. So for my case, because I define only the fulfillment event will use the Dhamma, so I don't need to worry about what event uh, I will need to handle. So I just return a response saying, okay, your order is fulfilled, blah, 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 right? And then I'll return this response. But before I return the response, I also have the opportunity to do other things like, for example, uh, for this case, I just uh, set a scenario where the burger or the burger is ready and I'll send an SMS out. So to do that, I'll just call, for example, a Twilio library and then I'll define the message I want to send. I have hard coded to my mobile number. Uh, that's why you see the message that your order is ready to pick up. Or pick up right? So if we switch back to the testing here, we can run another test. Uh, this time I'll do, uh, I would like to order food. Okay, pizza. And now you will see the fulfillment will be handled by the Lambda instead of the uh, the the program uh, fulfillment in the in the bot itself. So as you can see, this statement is actually coming up from here. Your order is fulfilled, right? And I think at the same time, I have also received uh, my order fulfillment. So as you can see, this one yeah, order is ready for pickup. So I tested <laughs> many times before this station actually. So just to make sure that it works, right? So switch back to uh, the the setting here. Uh, this is these are the steps you need. It's pretty simple and straightforward. Just to create a bot, define the intent, and you create a Dhamma to handle things that are more complex, like how you want to process the the answers that you get from the uh, from the users, right? But if we switch back to the next setting here, you realize that there is a channel integration. What is the channel? Channel is the media where we bring bridge the gap between the users and the services or the system, the applications. And this is one of the very important uh, component of the entire build, right? When you add a channel, you realize uh, Lambda Dex come with Facebook, meaning you can use Facebook Messenger to talk to the bot, or you can use Slack to communicate with the bot, or you can use Twilio. So for my case, I'm using Twilio SMS message to talk to the bot, the demo I've done, right? So let me quickly show you how that can be done. If you go to the Twilio console, under the phone number, under the phone number, you manage your active number. If you don't have an active number, what you can do is quickly by a number. To do that, you can click get a number. When you get a number, you have opportunity to select the country you want the number to be. So for my case, maybe I can say uh, one US. Then it shows you the capabilities of this number, what this number can do. So in this case, you have voice, SMS, and so on. So for my case, I already have a number. It's very simple. What I just need to do is I'll just select a number I want to use to bind a connect with the uh, Lex chatbot. So I open up the number configuration. There are different settings. 
they are voice messages, meaning when someone calls this number, what do you want to do with that? When someone SMS or message this number, what do you want to do with that? So in the message, incoming message, I did web hook, and immediately it will give me the URL. So I just take this URL, go back to the chat box here. In the integration, I said I'll integrate with. Let me uh, bring up the actual bot that I use for the demonstration uh, just now. So in this uh, channel integration, I, as you can see, I added a channel. So this channel, I have actually point to the endpoint of the uh, trip number. That, that, that is just a very simple step to do that. Right? So I hope uh, you get the idea on how this, is, this can be done. Um, so what I'm going to do uh, next, uh, I'll show you the lambda function. OK. So basically, that's all I have for the demo. It's a very quick, uh, straight, and easy uh, to create an intelligent chatbot using Amazon Dex and hook up the chatbot with uh, different channels that is available from the chatbot setting. Uh, what you see here, I didn't actually uh, do all the things or show all the things how the message are being passed to the SQS uh, because for the time uh, we uh, a time we have here, uh, what I did is I actually planned the demo session into three parts. Actually, what you are seeing is actually the first one where the AWS uh, Dex Lambda and the channel integration with Twilio. Uh, but if there is another opportunity next time, I will be able to show you how to decouple the applications, the Lambda service into serverless or the container to handle a huge load by using the SQS as well. So if you, if you look at the scenario, for instance, a number, if at any time we have more than 100 users call the number, can your Lambda function handle all the process, the heavy process? Like for example, after you take the order, you want to put it to the send it to the to the kitchen. The kitchen will make the burger. Before the burger is ready, is your service available for the next call? So decoupling of the services into a cloud native my, uh, serverless is the idea where you know lam how lambda is being used or container services is being used. So uh, if there is opportunity, I'll be able to show you how to do that in the serverless uh, and. Uh, container and the message queue. And of course, uh, the, the third part I plan is actually, I think uh, Moni is going to, to talk about the pipelines, the CIC portion. So I think that, we, that is good to power uh, all the implementations. So for the, my actual implementation, I actually use the ECS a lot, uh, the Kubernetes, and uh, I containerize my uh, services into containers and because with the setting of the pipelines, uh, the AWS uh, ECS there is a setting where it can auto scale up, it can auto spin up another services to handle the load in case if the, you know, if the if the service cannot take the load, it can actually spin up automatically for us. So uh, that's all I have uh, to share. So I believe you you are interested to try it out yourself. I have. Uh, in my demo, I have done a very quick high overview how you can, where you can get, where you can access the Lex uh, dashboard. From the dashboard, how you can create the board, how to create the intent, how to select the language, and how to bind the Lambda function. Oh, I missed out that part actually. I just show you the Lambda function, uh, but I already have the Lambda function. So you, for the Lambda function, you just search for Lambda. And then that will bring you to the Lambda dashboard. And you can create a Lambda function at the Lambda dashboard, or you can write the code in other uh, editor. Once you have uh, the code ready, I actually package the Lambda function into a zip file and upload the whole function to the Lambda function. So that's how I do it. But the other way of doing it is you can also create Lambda function layer. Layer is like uh, when you, your, your function 
external library, how you include that library in Node.js, Node for instance, we use npm install, right, in the, it's a normal development environment. But how do you do that? How do you do that in Dumbna function? You actually install it in your local and package the zip file and then upload the whole zip file. That is one way. The second way is you use a layer, meaning you import all your dependencies into a layer and then in your Lambda function, you can just specify which layer you want to use for the dependencies. So if you're interested to try this out, uh, you have the information on the DEX uh, steps to create the DEX. And for the Twilio part, uh, since I mentioned that I work for Twilio, I have the opportunity, I can get you the credit, the promo code. So if you register uh, your account here, you can search for this, how to apply the promo code. Uh, this is actually a $20 US, uh, $20 uh, promo code. Uh, that will give you enough credit to try it out. All the SMS, voices, and so on. Yeah. So thank you very much. Uh, again, my name is KK. I hope uh, you like the session, like the sharing. Uh, you can connect with me anytime. Uh, if there's any questions after this, feel free to reach out to me kkgun at live.com. Thanks. Maybe we can open up the one or two questions. Yeah, sorry, yeah, I forgot about that. Anyone has any questions to ask? Anything? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Sorry. Oh yeah, chef is just uh, the the chef, the physical chef who is uh, taking up the order from the order queue and then make the make the order and set the order status as uh, ready to pick up, and then the dumb now will just send the message out. I just try to illustrate how the entire scenario works. Yeah. Oh, it's not. It's not. <laughs> Sorry, I'm <laughs> confused. Yeah. Sorry, what was the point that was being made? I didn't understand that. Can you clarify that? Yeah. So the question is, what is the chef uh, as, as shown on the slides here? Yeah. So that is actually I'm trying to illustrate the actual kitchen role as a chef who is picking up the order. So my entire scenario is actually the bot takes the order from the audience from the callers. And then the Dhamma process the response and take the response, the order, and make it into an um, order queue. So the order queue is actually, uh, I'm using the message queue system. And then the dam another Dhamma function is actually listening to the queue. Whenever there is a new order come in, then you immediately pick the queue and pass it to the chef. Chef will, you know, just, just prepare the order. <laughs> yeah, it's just a scenario I try to illustrate. Uh, we have one last question from this side. Hi. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, I just want to ask, like, do you have people with API that you guys like spot? Sorry, I, can't, uh, I, can't, oh, I cannot see you. Okay, uh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, uh, I just want to ask, like, is, when you, you write your code in English, right? Is there any, like, you can, like, support multi-language feature or something like that? Oh, yeah, sure. So, uh, the DEX actually uh, can handle different languages, so let's take a look at that. Uh, where is it? Sorry, <laughs> I lost my screen. Yeah, so for the, as you can see all the different languages, right, when you create the bot, right, uh, you actually have the opportunity to, to select a language. So for my case here, uh, let's take a look at this one. So uh, when you create a bot, right? You see, the first thing you need to do is you will need to select the language actually. Okay, next. Yeah, I, I didn't show that. I just uh, assume that English is the one that I want for the for the bot. So I'll pick up one of these. So maybe I'll show it again. So see, the moment you define the bot, the first thing you select is 
which language you want. But you can actually add multiple channels with different languages. So the language availabilities are here. You can see Japanese, Korean, Spanish, and etc. Right, I hope I answer your question. Is there any Indonesia? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I try I I try to search for that as well. Yeah, not yet. Maybe you need to wait for a while. <laughs> right. So anyway, I don't want to uh, hold the stage for too long. I think I need to pass it to the next speaker. But if you have any other questions, do feel free to reach out to me. I'll be around anyway tonight and. You know, even after tonight, you will be able to reach me at my email. Thank you.